Hey everybody and welcome back to another YouTube video. It's your girl Chrissy Chella here and I'm going to be taking you through a dumbbell only booty and abs workout in the comfort of your own home. If you do not have a set of dumbbells, grab any form of resistance or listen to the instructions and the alternatives that I'm going to provide. The entire workout will be listed in the description box so you can also send this to a friend and you can do it together while you're on FaceTime, why not? Get your workout buddy involved too. So without further ado, let's start. So the first thing we're gonna do is spend a few minutes warming up and activating our glutes and also activating our core. I can't stress the importance of warming up and if you ain't warming up, I am gonna come after you and I'm gonna whoop your ass. So please warm up, stop injuring yourself and actually activate those glutes properly. So the first thing we're gonna do is a standard squat. So you wanna put your feet shoulder width apart a little bit wider, find what works for you. Externally rotate your feet a little bit outwards. Everybody's ankle mobility is different. So some people like having their feet completely forward. Other people like having it a little bit more externally rotated. You're gonna go into a deep squat for me. You're gonna go down, pulsate at the bottom and come back up. Contracting your glutes at the top, but never over hyperextending. So I don't wanna be seeing you coming forward like this and then going like this. That's gonna cause a lot of tension in your lower back. Here's what you're gonna do instead. You're gonna contract your core, breathe in, hands here in front of you. You're gonna sit back, pulse, come back up, contracting your glutes, bringing your coccyx bone in, squeezing but never over hyperextending. Let's go. Pushing those knees out at all times. Why am I going into so much detail when it comes to a standard bodyweight squat? Because my question for you is, have you perfected your form just using your body weight before you go crazy with the weights? Keep going. Breathe in, out as you come in. Breathe in, in, pose. The next exercise we're gonna go into is lateral squats. So you're gonna come deep into your left hand side, stretching your right hand side. You're gonna keep your arms in front of you or behind your head, whatever feels comfortable. Distributing the weight, you're gonna transfer the weight and come over to your other foot. Also sitting back and having your chest upright. I don't want you to do this. This is not what we're doing, okay? Bring that body upwards, chest upright, core nice and tight and you want to transfer over transfer over let me know if you like these tips and tricks because i know sometimes it feels like i'm talking too much but i am your trainer at the end of the day and it's my job to make sure that you're doing something properly and adequately enough and you're feeling it in the right places and you're not straining or hurting yourself so please do let me know if these tips are helpful and i'll continue to do them Keeping that core tight, transferring the weight. The next exercise we're gonna do is some dynamic stretching. So essentially what you're gonna do is opposite hand and opposite foot, you're gonna come in and you're gonna meet it in the middle. If this is too much and you don't have good balance, hold onto a wall and do the exact same thing, just like so. The next warm up is going to be a deep lunge into a rotation. So you're gonna give me a nice deep lunge. Opposite hand and opposite toes are gonna to meet just like this. And you're gonna rotate at your core and your upper body. You're gonna stretch every aspect out here. So you're working your core, your upper body, your glutes as well, and your hamstring should be nice and stretched out. Holding for a good five to six seconds Try and get 10 seconds, but if you're a beginner, five seconds would be great. And then meeting your feet in the middle before transferring back and doing the exact same thing on the opposite side. Good job. You're gonna give me two sets of those. So pretty much two of these on either side. So, 
The last thing I want to do is a really deep squat. So push your legs outwards into a nice sumo stance. You're going to come down, bring your arms hanging forward. As you come up, you're going to rotate your hands into a 360 rotation at that ball and socket right there. You're going to come back down, come back up. Nice big 360 rotation, come back down. You're going to give me 15 reps of these. So seeing as we're working out in the comfort of our own home and we are limited to equipment, I'm going to make this workout one very, very fun for you. Like all of the Tonoscope workouts are, if you don't know what the Tonoscope workout is, this is where all my programs are and you can find them here. And there is a massive home workout section there and a home workout toggle so you can find all of your home workouts there and do them in the comfort of your own home with equipment or without equipment. So do check that out. And also you get a 14 day free trial, so why not? But anyway, going back to this one. If you are struggling to be creative at home and you don't know where to start, this is what I want you to do. Start including complex movements together. So it's super simple, super easy to do. So here's a little complex for you. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go into 10 body weight pulse squats. Once you're finished with 10, you're gonna grab your dumbbell, bending your knees, grabbing your dumbbell, distributing it upwards just like so into a goblet squat. Then you're gonna give me a more narrow stance squat and you're gonna give me 10 of those reps too. So, the reason you're doing that is because you're adding complex moves together. So, your first movement is more of a wide squat, working your gluteus medius a little bit more because your feet are externally rotated, so you're activating that region of your glutes. And then you're going straight into a goblet squat, focusing more on your quads. So then you're coming here. If you want to focus less on your quads, externally you rotate your feet outwards and focus on your glutes a little bit more. It's completely up to you. I know this is a booty workout, but I just wanted you to know the difference. So you're going to give me 20 reps total, four sets. Let's go. exercise we're going to do is we're going to work on another more complex move. So you're going to grab one dumbbell and you're going to give me a stiff leg deadlift just like so, hinging at your hips. Once you've done that, you're going to bend one leg just like so and you're going to do single leg deadlift. So by bending one leg and bringing it backwards, you're isolating one hamstring and glute at the time, just like so. So you're gonna give me 10 reps of each movement, four sets. So here we go, 10 stiff leg deadlifts, hinging at your hips, making sure your knees have a slight soft them. Do not overlock like this. You're gonna come down, chin close to your chest, coming back up, contracting your glutes, Never over hyperextending, keeping everything nice and controlled. Straight after you've done 10 reps, you're going to bend one of your knees, bringing it backwards, isolating one hamstring. You're going to give me 10 reps on each leg. So I'm not going to lie, 
That second movement, that second complex hits differently. But if you're fe feeling a little niggle in your lower back, because it is a lot of, you're, you're adding a lot of pressure because you're doing a lot of hinging motion. So your hips are hinging right here, right? So if it starts to hurt a little bit too much, then lower your rep ranges and also lower the weights that you are using. Focus on your form. So are you hinging back? Are you putting less pressure on your lower back and more pressure on your hamstrings? So your hamstrings should be doing all the pulling. So think about it. Tell your hamstrings to pull, 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 not your lower back. And I don't want to be seeing any overarching like so or over hyperextending like so. Your spine should be one straight line and then the anatomy should be one straight line. And then it curves and does all these weird, weird, crazy things. But just imagine it's like one straight line. Your neck should be really nice and straight and in alignment with your entire spine. You're coming down, hinging at the hips, really stretching your hamstring out, coming back up just like so. All right, time for exercise number three. With exercise number three, I'm gonna use both my dumbbells, but I'm gonna go into a really nice, deep sumo deadlift into a squat. So I'm using both my dumbbells to make it a little bit more difficult and also adding a bit more resistance. So essentially, you wanna be doing, use one dumbbell if you're practicing or no dumbbells first. So just using your hands like so, coming back up, just use your hands, find your motion. So essentially, you want to be bringing your dumbbells forward like so. You're gonna hinge back, bringing your shoulders forward, stretching your hamstrings, coming up, and then going into a squat, coming back up. So did you notice the difference? When I'm doing a deadlift, I'm hinging back, I'm coming a little bit forward with my shoulders, stretching out my hamstrings and glutes, bringing the weight up, and then for my squat, my body is more upright. So you're gonna give me eight reps. So a deadlift and a squat is one rep. So you're gonna give me eight of those, three sets. Let's go. movement going on to exercise number four for your booty we're going to do a standard hip thrust so nothing crazy just your standard hip thrust using a chair this is one of my dining room chairs you can use a sofa which will give you a bit more stability but also please make sure that you are leaning it against a wall oh my god i'm out of breath Woo! i'm not even gonna lie to you i'm out of breath i'm trying to be all professional but this is all really difficult oh gosh so we're gonna bring the dumbbell onto our laps. Okay, one-on-one -on -one tips for hip thrusting. Scalpula should be on your bench, chair, whatever you wanna call it. Your arms should be nice and comfortably straight, just like so. You wanna come too back or too upright, you wanna find that happy medium. Your legs should be a little bit, I would say more than shoulder width apart. You don't wanna have them too narrow, you don't wanna have them too wide. So similar to your squat stance. You wanna be looking forward, chin tucked into your chest. Chest nice and upright, core nice and stiff. The aim of the game, you don't wanna move from here to here, where your rib cage is. This section here, you don't wanna move this bad boy. You wanna move just here at your hip hinge, just like so. Now technically, you're using one joint movement. Technically, if you wanna be really technical, you are gonna be using your knee joints, but they're not flexing too much, right? So you're using your hip joint. So your hip joints should be doing all of the motion in the ocean, just like so, right? So watch this. This is me using all of my body. This is me controlling the movement using one hinge transferring the weight up, looking forward at all times, bringing it down, scooping my coccyx bone in, like an ice cream scooper, that's what you wanna do. Okay, bringing it back down, keeping that core nice and tight, hinging just like so. So what you're gonna do now is you're gonna give me 12 reps, three sets, let's go. So 
once you finish with your hip thrust, now you can do this two ways, this workout, by the way. You could do it as a circuit format. So pretty much a circuit format would be performing one set of each exercise and then taking a break and then going back to exercise number one and working your way down to exercise number five. So this is just the booty segment. I'm dividing the booty and the abs separately. Or you can do it how I would do it and I would personally do one entire exercise, all the reps and all the sets allocated before moving on to your second exercise. That's more like a gym program, so if you're doing the Tony Sculpt app, you would know that's a gym format. If you're a home bird and if you're doing a sculpted workout, then that is more of a circuit based, but it's completely up to you. You are going to be feeling it much, much more if you're giving yourself rest, less rest and going from one exercise to the other and just jump in. And then if you wanna just really focus on your form and maybe lifting a little bit more weight, depending on what resistance you have at home, definitely focus on completing one of the exercises and all the sets before moving on to your another exercise. So the final booty movement we're gonna be doing is a body weight movement, so we're not using any of the dumbbells. And instead we're focusing more on isolation. So, Obviously, I don't know if you guys know this, but I'm just gonna make it very really simple. We focus a lot on compound moves. Compound moves are where you use multiple muscles and multiple joints at the same time. So for example, I am, if you're doing a squat, using multiple muscles and multiple joints. Joints being your knees and your hips, muscles being your legs, your glutes, your core, even sometimes, depending on the load, your upper body, especially if you're holding a dumbbell. But with an isolation movement, you're, you're targeting one specific area in your body using one joint. So for example, the movement we're gonna be doing and isolating on is the kickback. We're gonna do a straight leg kickback. If you feel this too much in your lower back, you're gonna lean slightly forward, bend your knees, and do it this way. I personally like doing them both ways. It doesn't bother me. But if it hurts you, come forward and kick back. We're isolating the glutes here and we're using one joint. Okay, you ready? Let's go. Ooh, okay. So you're gonna be doing 30 reps on each leg, two sets. So that's gonna be your little booty finisher. So once you're finished with your lower body aspect of this workout, we're moving on to our core. So our core is gonna be compromised of four exercises, 15 reps each, two rounds. That's it, it's your little finisher for this workout. So without further ado, let's get into the abs. Okay, so when it comes to abs, I'm gonna be using a chair and my mat. If you don't have a chair, use your sofa. So the first movement we're gonna be doing is an elevated crunch. So we're gonna elevate from our knee all the way down to our feet. And then essentially what you're gonna do is, this is how I want you to breathe, ready? When you are not contracting, so this means this, ready? This is you contracting, coming up is you contracting. You wanna inhale at the bottom, focus in, feel that those abs right there, everybody has abs, so I don't wanna be seeing no comments saying, what abs am I feeling, Chrissy? Everybody has abs, okay? So your core muscle compromise, it's, it's this big muscle here. It's not six individual six packs, it's a big muscle here. So you wanna dig deep into that. So you wanna push down on the mat, which will avoid you overarching your back and causing a lot of, your, a lot of strain in your lower back. So you wanna push down, just like so, nice and hard. When you come up, you wanna, don't breathe out. That's blowing out too much air. You wanna breathe and contract. Breathe and contract as you come up. So this is what I mean. You're breathing in. Do you see that? You're breathing in. This is you just breathing in and out. You're gonna control it. You're gonna breathe in. <sighs> Next 
second exercise we're doing is toe taps. Same principle applies when you are breathing. So you're gonna give me 15 reps of these right after the first exercise. The next movement you're gonna be doing is in and out. So essentially you wanna breathe in as your legs are out and breathe out as your legs come in. So it's the opposite. Breathing in when your legs are out, breathing out as your legs are in. So it's the opposite to your legs. Your breathing technique should be the opposite to your legs. So 15 reps. The last exercise we're doing is a flutter kick. So you're gonna lean backwards using your hands to support you. You can also lean on your forearms if you're a beginner. Advanced, come up a little bit more. You're gonna flutter like so, but really holding and contracting your core. So you're gonna give me 15 reps on each leg, equating to 30 reps. So there you have it, an abs and booty dumbbell only workout that you can do in the comfort of your own home. Please make sure you leave this video a little like and also hit that subscribe button because I truly, truly hope you enjoyed this workout and, and I hope your booty enjoyed it too. Oh. Okay, I'll see you next time for another YouTube video. Love you always and forever. Bye.